On today's show, we break down the big game. It was an excellent one. Get our takes on that. And make sure you're sitting down because we're talking shocking stats. I don't want you falling over. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Leave a comment and enjoy the show. <laughs> Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today, but I got to remind you, the ultimate draft kit for oh, 2022 oh, it's here. It's available for pre-order, and you can win a listener league spot if you get in before March 10th. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com. You get the lowest price. You get into that sweet, sweet dynasty pass if you get the UDK+. Plus. There's so much that we're going to give you if you get in nice and early. I mean, the, uh, 2022 is here. I mean, the Super Bowl is old news. Yes. I mean, the year has been here for a while. Right. But like it, a month. I think you know what I'm saying, Mike. <laughs> UltimateDraftKit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in Tuesday, February 15th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. Shocking stats episode coming your way. Some surprises, some things to go over. Some Super Bowl reactions from the mm, team here. Mm -hmm. Congrats to Jared Goff on the big... Uh... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, uh... oh no. <laughs> I'm sure he could have <laughs> orchestrated a comeback. Why, why, why are we throwing I, I, I Goff in the know. body bag? I'm just... I, He's I, up there in Detroit just minding his own business. You're right. You're right. That wasn't nice. It was, I, it was funny, though. <laughs> so it worked. I mean, going all in, getting Matthew it, Stafford, it Odell did. Beckham Jr. for a Von half. Von Miller. And Von Miller. Uh, the template has been repeated in two straight years, really. Veteran quarterback, go all in on some players and... Win at home in the Super Bowl. Well, that's good news for the Cardinals who host the next Super Bowl. Yeah, Cardinals led by Colt McCoy. Do we? Yeah. No. Uh, no, no. I mean twenty three twenty the Rams over the Bengals. I, I don't know if it's just because the last couple of years in the world has caused people to just, you know, they're stuck in their homes and all they have is their Twitter and Twitter's now a, a more dangerous place than it was two years ago. But I've never seen so much whining over, you know. The the ref situation. Oh really? I didn't. I I feel like. Are you talking about the end of the game? The series of flags. At I'm the talking end? about yeah, specifically the holding call that put the Rams on the goal line. Sure. That was a bad call. I'm not saying it wasn't, but you know, I I talk so friend of the show Cooper Cup. Oh yeah, Super Bowl MVP, this. Triple mm. Crown winner, best season you could have. If you draw up before the year begins, you're like, hey, give me your goals. Oh, man. You can't draw up the kind of season that Cooper Cup had. It was the best season you could ever have. You end with a ring. You're the Super Bowl MVP. And, you know, he posted uh, on Twitter last night. And it's like all the replies are just like people bodying the refs, saying that they handed the Rams the Super Bowl, all the while ignoring T. Higgins. Spinning, I was going to say that there was, you uh, know, ripping the head off of Jalen Ramsey, you know. That one was Far more egregious. Yeah, it led to a whatever it was, 70-yard touchdown. Yeah. So I, I just think that, uh, you know, it ended the way it was supposed to end. 23-20 it was a pretty well-fought game. It was, it was kind of what we said on the show where, I mean, it, it's not rocket science here when you have Aaron Donald. Mm -hmm. But the, the defensive pressure was going to be too much at some point in time for Joe Burrow, and they have $66 million in cap space that they need to spend on an O-line. Yeah, that that very end, uh, the last play of the game for the Bengals, at least when uh, you know when Joe Burrow got pressured and sacked, or almost sacked, he, he threw the ball um, before he went down. But Jamar Chase beat Jalen Ramsey bad down the side. Ramsey was on the ground. That is a game-winning walk-off touchdown if you just – protect Joe Burrow but they didn't he got a, a, a face full of um, enemies and yeah. uh, that that was it but I I still fully blame the play prior to that play well yeah you can talk about 
I mean, that was my instant tweet too. It was like Samaji P Ryan, really? Yeah. Like it, it's incomprehensible. No one saw it coming, and it's just and yet still stopped it. This is just, and what happens if people want to know why Joe Mixon's not out there? Right. It's because of the backwards coaching philosophy that is we do what we do, which is we decide somewhere during the season that we're going to give third downs away. And then we build a personnel package for third down. And then when we run third downs, mm -hmm. these guys run out on the field. And P. Ryan or Chris Evans is the guy that just runs out there with that package. That's what happens. It's not like Zach Taylor is sitting over there and saying, I'm making a decision right now, and it's going to be Joe Mix. No, let's go, but send Samaje in there. No, it's because he sure he just has a personnel grouping, and it just it's a default situation. So you can blame him. That's fine. But it's just this happens too much in the NFL. It really does. Yeah, I mean, it, the clock was against them. Running up the middle, when you have P. Ryan in, like, you know, you might not be saying, oh, I need to put P. Ryan in. That was just the package that's in there on third down. But you are aware of who is on the field. Yes, you sure. know what personnel yes. you have. Yep. And so it's like, this is the, this is, you've got your third down team package on the field. Let's not, with the clock against us, run it up the middle with. Samaj P. Ryan and take the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands. Like if Joe Burrow had two opportunities to pick up a yard, I think he would have done it. But he had one opportunity. He took the sack. Game was over. Yeah. And, you know, Brooks, I see him chiming in over here, is absolutely right. You're in the Super Bowl. Use Mixon on third down. You do, And the whole point of taking Mixon off the field in the regular season has to be protecting him yeah it's pass protect well i think it was pass well, protection. pass protection and durability it's right like protection. you give them you give them a snap off and they're like they they felt like it this is my interpretation you put p run on the field that signals to the the defense we're gonna throw and so they were just trying to catch him off balance and it's one yard i mean how can how can you not get one yard uh just running up the middle is is the surprising part and too. and let's be honest we're not fair as fans i mean this is always revisionist history the, the yeah, if it works it works the end around play on fourth down to cooper cup if it's not cooper cup i mean he gets tackled there and we're all he's an idiot why why right. get cute on that play and go end around there when you could just run it up the blah 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 wait so you mean when they gave it to their best offensive player okay in a time fair. of need yeah that's what you do you give it to Debo. <laughs> you give it to cooper cup you give it to Mixon. you don't Give it to Samaji P. Ryan. All right. That's fair. Burrow sacked 18 times in four playoff games. Impressive. If he, if he had a, a nice offensive line, his, his a, a ability to get outside the pocket already, move around, make things happen. I mean, it's a bright future for Cincinnati. That's for sure. Yes, absolutely a bright future. I just have some words of encouragement from uh, Hall of Fame quarterback. Dan Marino says, mm. don't worry. You'll definitely make it back. <laughs> oh, man. That's rough. That's rough stuff there. Wow. All right. Uh, Cooper Cup, Super Bowl. It was his second year, wasn't it? Joe Burrow? Yeah. No, Marino. It was, um, Am I remembering that right? I thought it was his rookie year. I don't know. I'll try and vet that. I thought he went in his rookie season. <laughs> and by I thought, I was probably five years old. So I think it was his rookie season. Well, his rookie season was 1983. Okay, so I wasn't born yet. You were not five. <laughs> All right, I wasn't born yet. I think it was his first year. You should And for those that out. Uh, younger listeners out there, Dan Marino <laughs> did not win a Super Bowl in his career. Oh, I thought you were going to say Dan Marino was the actor. In... Yes, the actor from Ace Ventura. It was detective. 1984, so it was his, it was it was his, his second, second year. year. <laughs> Sorry about that. He was my favorite player growing up, Dan Marino. I was a big Dolphins fan because of him. That's how it works. If you like the logo and or one player on the team, that was your favorite team, and the Cardinals didn't didn't exist out here yet. Uh, Odell Beckham was making plays. Oh, man. And then went out with a non-contact left knee injury. So, you know, before the game, Chris Mortensen reported the Rams were optimistic he'd be back with the team next year. Uh, I was kind of amazed that the offense – I mean, obviously they, they put one drive together, but – it just kind of stopped functioning. They couldn't run the ball in the game. A lot of credit right. to the Cincinnati defense. Oh, I want to be so good. Be clear, especially against the run. I mean, Cam Akers looked incapable of doing anything, and then they put in other backs, and they are incapable of doing anything. But 
you know, they couldn't move the ball. And no Tyler Higby and then no Blanton. And no Robert injury. Woods. No Robert Woods. I mean, you did – Skorenic's not going to get it done for you. No, he can pop it up for an interception, though, which uh, he did. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think that Odell Beckham will resign with the Rams. They, they were talking prior to this game, asked, will he take a discount to come back? And no athlete ever says yes, and he said yes. Right. He, he had admitted a – a place of weakness from a contract negotiation saying, yes, I'll take a discount to come back. When you do that and you are important to the team, I th I think with this ACL, it's it's a surgery, obviously, that he can Have recover. We, I guess it's not confirmed yet right. that it's an ACL. We assume because of non-contact, it was his same knee that he had the surgery in before, so probably, but maybe not. What do you make of him being on the sideline walking around? Like, obviously, people walk off with ACL injuries, but I don't remember one where they're standing around walking for the remainder of the game. I will say this. His Super tag. Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl. Maybe sure. that's, that's the difference. His tag was questionable to return, which is not usually what happens. ACLs, obviously, you need you know an, an MRI to fully confirm, but they can usually have a, a pretty clear idea. Mm -hmm. We think it's an ACL. We just need the MRI to confirm it. And the fact that he was told questionable to return made me go, oh, maybe the, the initial tests were – maybe optimistic more positive yeah. yeah we don't have anything new on the injury yet guys do we no sir i see people shaking heads over there the borgogan with us this morning are you on the microphone no he's shaking his head okay thank goodness just <laughs> just al yeah. just al on the microphone just, and me and just me. me and brooks yeah okay let's talk news news and notes from around the league let's not you don't want to talk about this. <laughs> talk about this Kyler Murray. Bust. Is that our? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, overarching report for Kyler Murray after the great social media escapades of last week. Chris Mortensen reported that he's frustrated with the Cardinals. He's been framed as a scapegoat for the playoff loss. Um, hmm. and it then on the other side, the report is the Cardinals view him as immature and uh, a finger pointer and have tried to talk to him about the sideline attitude are you issues a, are you a scapegoat if it was in fact your fault uh right. that's a great question because he's being used as a scapegoat but right. he sucked but he was really bad right there's been rumors that he is that just a goat like <laughs> not greatest of all time but just a goat uh yeah i mean he was bad in that game obviously you know you could blame game plan you can blame aaron donald sure. whatever but or no deandre hopkins the reality is is I don't – he's going to be back. He's going to be playing quarterback yes. for the Cardinals. Anybody who thinks otherwise is insane, and he'll be the quarterback. He wants a contract extension. He's eligible for it. Um, J.J. Watt had a hilarious oh tweet about it this morning. Did you see that? Mike? I did not. So funny. So J.J. Watt has a basically a selfie video saying that he just tried to FaceTime Kyler, and Kyler didn't answer. Mm-hmm. What does this mean? Yeah, it was, was tongue-in-cheek. Oh, you know, he was making fun of me. He goes, he goes or he's, he has this big, serious monologue. He goes, or maybe he's at dinner. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was great. Yeah, the, the problem, JJ, is the, the the scrubbing of the social media stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be back and play quarterback no, for I, the Cardinals. I, I, I totally understand it. That's, like, that's a pro move, like PR-wise, by JJ to try and pull some heat while he maybe, hopefully, he's trying to actually call up Kyler and be like, dude, we can't, we can't be operating like this. Yeah, I mean, there are, he's he's definitely a, gener a different generation of quarterback. Yes. With his, you know, he's obviously got all the gaming interests and, um, like, he's a quieter kind of leader, not a prototypical one. So, I don't know what the real story is. We don't know either. We'll give you fantasy breakdown of something if it happens but yeah i mean that's that's part of where the problem lies is that you know that he is aware of the buzz that he has created correct like he did, doesn't go out and fix it yeah yeah it, you are intentionally letting that hang out there which is so a good fact, leader does this is sending another statement that, about, about that, his immaturity yeah it's it's unfortunate yeah and this was probably who knows it could have been provocated by Let's get this next contract. And Maybe. he just sits down until he gets it. Could you imagine Sean McVay right now if he was the coach of the Cardinals just casually sitting to the sideline? Like, he, he holds his players accountable. I feel like Cliff is on some beach somewhere 
<laughs> you are the I've I've brought this up before. I'm gonna bring it up again. Uh, you are the single hardest hometown fan in the world. Yeah. You see it through a li- if anything goes slightly sideways, you th- see it through the most negative lens possible. I've been Is this protection? No, is no, this no. to protect yourself from Mm-mm. vulnerability? No, this is this is been trained in me over how many championships do our football and basketball teams have over the last hundred years uh where's the uh <laughs> yeah it's a goose that's that's why i'm pessimistic okay well that's fair i mean you never you'd rather not have i've always been right off-season controversy yes you've always been right uh kirk cousins will remain with the vikings in 2022 i bet it has to do with the 45 million dollars or whatever they want yeah uh, the Raider. We we have a shocking stat about the Vikings on today's show. We'll discuss the Cousins situation. Raiders are prepared to discuss a contract extension that would keep Derek Carr in Las Vegas for the foreseeable future. We're prepared to, huh? We're not doing it, huh? But we're we're we're. You, you, you had not heard it. that, Mike? No, I, yeah, I missed that little blurb and that, huh? Ready to make a commitment? That's that's a little head scratch. I again, I don't think Derek Carr is bad, but at this point. Do you really think he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback? I, I don't think know. that there are very few Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. I think if you have a Derek Carr, they are a a playoff contending um, quality quarterback that you do keep. He's only thirty years old. It's pretty much like the Kirk Cousins situation. I mean, I think except you're not financially committed to Derek Carr now, right? I mean, I don't view, and may, maybe this is maybe this is blasphemy to some. I have never viewed Matt Ryan. I know he won an MVP award and had a phenomenal year, got to a Super Bowl. I don't view Matt Ryan as a as one of those just Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. I view him as a Derek Carr, very capable, mm. quality guy that if you've got a good team around him can 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 really be a good quarterback. And so that's kind of how I I view him and you know, Matt Ryan was minutes away from a Super Bowl victory. I mean, how do you, how did you view the Matthew Stafford season? I mean, it, I don't think anybody kind of views this championship as Stafford putting the team on his back. Mm. And I'm the biggest Stafford fan that you can find. I mean, somebody drummed up an old tweet where I said he was an Andy Reid away from multiple championships because he's that talented. But this was a real team yeah, championship. Your defense is, has elite Hall of Famers at multiple positions. Cooper Cup had the arguably the best single season ever for a wide receiver. Um, man, that throw though, to Cooper Cup, <laughs> that that throw in the middle of the game. Did you see it? <laughs> yes, he it was no. It was a no look throw. Oh, really? I didn't realize. Go it was watch. No look. Go watch. That makes fi- a lot of sense. Go yeah. watch the film for uh, the cross the middle Cooper Cup. Cooper, look look at your target. Look look where you're throwing. That's unbelievable. <laughs> um, Carson Wentz. There's a report he'll probably be traded or released before the start of the new year. This. Bad this vibes. is also Chris Mortensen. Is he getting back like into uh, Look at the Mort report? Let's go. I just feel like this is a disproportionate amount of Mort in our news. Uh, we had some awards given out. Cooper Cup, Offensive Player of the Year, MVP to Aaron Rodgers again. Uh, there are rumors that the Packers are willing to not just pay Rodgers, oh, this but is... go all in, go above the cap, do whatever they need to do. This is full posture season for the Green Bay. They if have, I'm Aaron Rodgers, I say prove it to me. Give me a wide receiver. But the, the Packers have no choice. This is what they have to do because – They're so dumb. Either either you keep him and you did it, congratulations team, or he forces his way out and he is completely the bad guy because <laughs> we said – like if you look at the news, we said we would do whatever it takes. Like it, it's – This is so, – The train's so already stupid. in motion. Though. Al, they are so stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. They gambled and lost. You yeah. you decided to go spend a first rounder on Jordan Love and Tra- uh, want tra- they traded up traded up to do that and then you went and watched your quarterback win back to back MVPs whoopsies and then now you have to fight <laughs> tooth and nail to be relevant in the NFL and keep him I mean if I am Aaron Rodgers the only way I I might not be able to play next year because I'm laughing so hard that might be my situation I'm just laughing at how it worked out in my favor yeah although that suit hmm questionable oh did he have a funky suit he had a really nice suit in the 70s <laughs> it was it is oh, a didn't, 70s i didn't see suit. it i did not see it but yeah he's, back when they he also works color. for ups I was like, say, right. <laughs> rogers has all the leverage rogers is completely in control of this situation i, don't, I would work, i don't know where he wants to go though 
I, if I were him, beyond being paid more money than everybody else, I would work some real humiliating stuff into my contract. <laughs> I would make like the head coach has to go bow to him once in, every day in the morning. Uh, I, I, I will be referred to as Mr. Rogers at all points <laughs> moving uh, forward. I mean, you have to crown him every day. Uh, Joe Burrow, comeback player of the year. Jamar Chase, offensive rookie of the year. Call me father, please. And congratulations. <laughs> yeah, who's your daddy? Yeah. Uh, Mike Vrabel, coach of the year. Congra Mike Vrabel, yeah, we baby. did it, yes! <laughs> Congrats. Mm. Mike Vrabel, and if you were uh, riding with us on oh, uh, yeah. Evan McPherson, over one and a half field goals, we squeaked it in. <laughs> congratulations. Yes, yes. You guys want to talk some shocking stats? Yes. How'd you do that? It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. All right, I told you we had a shocking stat for the Vikings. Let's start with that one. They played in one-score games, guys. 14 of their first 15 games that ties an all-time record for one possession games in a season it also in my opinion validates coaching issues right you hmm. play you, you have the talent you have the skill players to be in the game but you can't close out the game you can't get it done um they were also a they were just a ridiculously inefficient offense despite the talent where they i think they had the most three and outs of any team in football Ooh. which is not – it's not in here in our doc, but I saw that the other day. They were in the bottom five for sure. And it's like how do you do that with Jefferson, Cousins, and Dalvin Cook? And it's because you're predictable. You run the ball on first down and you pass it on second down. You know, what's the future here? If he's back, you got a new head coach, Kevin O'Connell, coming over from the now Super Bowl champion Rams. Yeah, I – um. I mean, I I don't see it as necessarily bad coaching, right? Two years ago, whenever you're in those one-score games, and we know this from history, we know this from a couple of years, just a couple of years ago you know, with, with the, the Cardinals and, and the Chargers. The Chargers, too. where when you're in these one-score games, the ball bounces different ways. And two years ago, they had a lot of close one-score games. They were above 500 in those. This last year, they were below 500, six and eight. Um, I view the Vikings, and, and tell me if, if you view it different. I view them on the way down. I view the Vikings right now as a team that has been really good over the last five, six years, contending for their division, never really got over the hump. They thought that they were a Kirk Cousins away. They weren't. And now a lot of their players are aging out. Adam Thielen is not going to be getting any younger. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they're winning on Patrick Peterson and on the defensive side of the ball. So I think this is a team that they're up against it cap wise. They do have a couple really valuable offensive pieces. And for fantasy, um, I love that. I love the fact that they are changing from Mike Zimmer because I think what his desire was did limit their offense. But as a as a team, I think they're going to get worse before they get better. I still see them as second in the division. I mean, this was a team I thought. Well, yeah. I mean, they play with the Lions, so they're not going to be fourth. Yeah, well, I, the, I, the think Bears got another, I think they have another strong season in them. Kirk Cousins is underrated. He's a great quarterback. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, they were the they were a terrible defense. That can improve. Yeah. I mean, you were you were hoping, right, that they were going to make an improvement this season. They were thirtieth in yards allowed. I mean, it's if they, they at, did not. Looking what and it cost him his job. They we talked about them in the season of how they just whatever team they play to the competition of their team, which is I don't that's probably not the best thing, but like they beat the Packers, they beat the Chargers, they you know, uh, barely they lose a one score game to the Super Bowl champs, the Rams, and then but then they go out and they lose to the Detroit Lions. Like they're a they were a very bizarre team. Fantasy wise, I will be buying up discounted assets if that's the view that others have of the Vikings for next year. Well, yeah, I mean, my view of them on the way down doesn't necessarily mean that for fantasy. For fantasy purposes, Kevin O'Connell coming in, an offensive mind. I think he's going to want to aired out a little bit more and he's got the he's got the weapon in Justin Jefferson to do that. Cooper Cup. What? I'm saying I'm saying uh 
Justin Jefferson can can Cooper Cup it for you know oh. the Kevin O'Connell. It just sounded like you said the you word can, Cooper Cup yes. out of no and context. Then stopped. Just no, stop. Cooper, Cooper Cup. Cup. Cooper Cup it. <laughs> just say it. It was Cooper Cup it. Oh, it was Cooper Cup it. Yes. <laughs> hmm. It was a as it a was, as a uh, like as a, a verb. descriptive verb. Yes, Justin exactly Jefferson right. Cooper Cup it. <laughs> Justin Jefferson, yes. Cooper Cup it. That's what we all heard. <laughs> we did. We did. I will check the tape. I said Cooper Cup it. You, <laughs> Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup it. His defense <laughs> is that he said the phrase Cooper Cup it. That's right. That's what I wanted Which to do. Which should have been understood right. by us, yeah. the fools. Thank you. Uh, let's let's piggyback here. Here's another <laughs> shocking stat. Living inside the five. Uh, Dalvin Cook. 15 carries inside the five this year, only three rushing touchdowns. Wow. So this is primed for some positive regression for yep. Dalvin Cook. On the other side of the coin, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who struggled in 2020. By the way, Dalvin Cook was great in that department in 2020. Yep. Clyde struggled in 2020, had four opportunities inside the five. All four opportunities were touchdowns. So that was what you wanted to see from Clyde. You wanted to see him get into the end zone. But that efficiency is, um, well, it's nice. Let's just say it would have given Dalvin 15 touchdowns. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, it's definitely a positive regression here for Dalvin Cook. He'll continue to get those carries inside the five. I, th I think the more interesting conversation around this statistic is Clyde Edwards-Alaire of what is he – in this dynasty offseason and moving into next year because it was going into year two, it was he showed some flashes here and there in year one, suffered an unfortunate injury his rookie year at the end, <clears throat> came back, uh, and you're like, perhaps there's a value here for Clyde, who was going in the third round or so of, of redraft this past season. And he looked okay, was splitting time with, you know, with the other Daryl. But then you get into the playoffs – and Jarek McKinnon was clearly running ahead of Clyde Edwards-Alaire and had like showed some juice. What do you make of that heading into next year? Was that simply a uh, Clyde was still recovering from the injury, or did Andy Reid look at his team and go, no, Jarek McKinnon is the much better option? I don't generally defend Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but I believe it was what you said. Okay. The injury? Yeah, they he was mostly returning from an injury, and they'd found a groove with Jared McKinnon and some rotation there in the backfield. And they weren't going to – like Clyde has not played up to a level where you – the second you have him back, you give him a, a, a workhorse role. That's like not, a, a first-round running back? Yeah, that's not how he has played. He He does not demand that from your offense where – you know how it was with Dalvin Cook coming back with the shoulder sling, and all of a sudden it was – the greatest game of all time against Pittsburgh. Oh, the device. The device. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that game was awesome. <laughs> he probably took that off for my championship game, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So what this stat says to me on the shocking stats of his of oh, getting back to Dalvin Cook and his inefficiency inside the red zone is a reminder that touchdowns are not a sticky stat. We say that, and sometimes people are, well, what does that mean, or, or whatever. Touchdowns vary. They are the least predictable thing, and it seems super predictable. It seems like, well, yeah, the yeah. touchdown guys are always going to get theirs. But it's not really the case. Look at it this way. The year before last, Alvin Kamara had 21 touchdowns. Yeah, I know there's a quarterback change. But he went from 21 to what What did he have this year? Like three, four? I mean, he had, you it know. It was a down year, yeah. Nothing. Tyreek Hill had 17 touchdowns two years ago. Dalvin Cook had 17 touchdowns. And now you're talking about way fewer touchdowns. Uh, and on the flip side, and when we look at this year and how that can affect how we rank going into 2022, Look, Austin Eckler was awesome. 20 touchdowns, fantastic. James Conner, touchdown machine. These stats from year to year are not the ones you want to base your belief in your picks in. You want to base it on yardage, on volume, on targets, on receptions, on those type of things. And it's nice to know that Austin Eckler can get 20. It's nice to know that Dalvin Cook can bounce back and have a, a ton of touchdowns, but don't put too much emphasis on that. Like James Connors, I'm, to me, if the, if he resigns with the Cardinals and he's the dude going in, I'm not going to just think he's getting 12, 13, 14 touchdowns <laughs> next year because that's just not the way that the NFL works. Year to year, great players go from scoring a lot of touchdowns 
to a handful of touchdowns, and then the next year a lot. It, it goes back and forth. If you're looking at touchdowns, I agree with you. If you're looking at opportunities, that can be more predictive, especially for players that have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. Like if you put, you know, what Dalvin Cook was, uh, had 15 attempts inside the red zone. Jonathan Taylor led the way. Uh, Connor was was after that. Like that is something I will chase. I will ch chase those opportunities if I think yes. the, if I think the role is the same. Yes, you should chase chase the volume. But looking at like, so Dalvin had the 15. Damian Harris had 15. Gibson had 15. Zeke at 14. I mean, those – Davo Cook easily should have had at least three more touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, the the lowest touchdown total for any of the players in the top ten was like six. Yeah. And he had three. So – and, you know, you watch that season. We, we, we marveled at Adam Thielen being the red zone weapon that he is, and Jefferson demands targets in there too. It just was a different year. You know, I look at that Antonio Gibson, 17 carries inside – you know, six touchdowns. That that's something interesting to me because he, if he has that exact same role, you could luck into that variance year where it's twelve, thirteen touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think anybody's. I mean, man, Jonathan Taylor, thirty <laughs> attempts, double the attempts. Yeah, it's a lot. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. All right. <sighs> Hurts so good. Go ahead and push the button there, Al. I know you're. I don't know what you're doing over there. What? Which one do you want? You're thinking of the. He always plays the hurt so good. Does he? Yeah. He's responsible for just a few that I never hit. It's hurt so good. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss by McKissick. That doesn't mean play it. Mm -mm, please don't. <laughs> now he will. Um, in 19 career starts, Jalen Hurts is averaging 8.82 .8 rushing fantasy points per game. That's delightful. So you get on average. <laughs> what? He likes to surprise us. <laughs> I mean, why don't you just play that, like boom? That drop has to interrupt people. It's the right. only way. Right. I but, thought we had moved past it. I but thought, we're not talking about J.D. McKissick. That is true. Uh, Why'd you say his name? <laughs> Jalen Hurts, 8.82 rushing fantasy points per game. Only Lamar Jackson is better at 8.6 throughout his career. He also had five games in 2021 with 13 plus fantasy points via the ground. So you look at Jalen Hurts moving into the future, and I think it's a pretty easy equation, right? Starting quarterback Jalen Hurts equals starting quarterback for your fantasy team. Isn't mm -hmm. that right? Yep. Yeah, totally agree. Um, 10 rushing touchdowns. Is that what he had this year? 10 rushing touchdowns for Jalen Hurts. I think he is a very safe quarterback, and I have not been a believer. But I think we've established the fact that he's going to be good for fantasy and competent in NFL play. And I think if he takes a step forward, he will entrench himself as their starter for the future. And uh, if this year is is uh, regression, obviously they'll move on because they don't have enough financial investment to force it. Yeah, I, I think he will be one of my most heavily rostered quarterbacks next year, depending on how the overall consensus where do you use him? feel like he goes because well, that that's what's great. i don't think he's late i don't think he's late but i think he's going to be like quarterback eight ish or something like okay. that and i don't see how he finishes outside of the top five other than injury because to me you know this was his full first season as a starter he's going to get better he had a rookie wide receiver and devonta smith who looked great he's going to get better so the passing game i i think will improve but if you look at his running, I mean, with this stat, this shocking stat is about his fantasy points per rushing attempt, how good he was on the ground running the ball. Before his ankle injury, he was on pace for 900-plus rushing yards. After the, the, the three games, once he got back from the ankle injury, he was only averaging 29 rushing yards a game, and now he, he had surgery on the ankle. Like, that was a, that was a bum ankle, right. and it got in the way of him running the ball. And his, the end of the season, he sputtered as a fantasy asset. He, so he didn't win people championships. And so I think it's a combination of because he sputtered at the end and people haven't really been all about him in general, he's not going to be one of those like top three, top four drafted guys. I think he's going to be the, the eighth or, or later quarterback drafted. And he has that top three upside with the legs. You saw it in the beginning of the year before the injury. So I think progression as an offense, as a passer, healthy ankle. I, I, I like Jalen Hurts. He, he, yeah, he's really a player you have to decide what kind of quarterback you want on your roster. He's tremendously consistent, 
He had six games where he threw zero touchdowns. He only had one three touchdown game. He is not he, he did not have a top two finish at the quarterback position. So sometimes you might want that quarterback that gives you that extremely high upside but is more variable in their finishes. Like Herbert would be an example of that. Lots of these weak winning weeks had some weeks where like Hurts never really hurts you. Other than after the ankle injury. Correct. But yeah. that that is something that has an excuse. I and think. if you leave the room for improvement as a passer, only 16 passing touchdowns on the season, like with the the, the growth of Smith on the outside, that number could Physically, go like up. is he getting bigger? Mm, I hope oh, he, uh, yeah, I hope he so. He needs to put on some so. LBs. No, you there, there's upside. Yeah. And there and there's downside. Don't let's not get it wrong. There's downside cuz he could be, you know, benched. I would pay a lot of money if the uh, trade destination for Carson Wentz was the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Some men just want to watch the world yes. burn. All right, here is uh, number four here, shocking stats. Where have all the Cowboys gone? Thank you for that, Yippee Kyle. Yippee Despite leading the NFL in total points, 30.4 points per game, all of the Dallas Cowboys starters in fantasy drafts failed to return their draft cost in 2021, which means... That is a shocking stat. For fantasy purposes... They were worse than where you drafted them. All mm -hmm. of them. Dak was drafted as the quarterback six. He finished at seven. Zeke, quarter, uh, running back four, finished at six. I think maybe the biggest letdown was CeeDee Lamb, drafted as the wide receiver 11 inside that uh, wide receiver one range. Ends wide receiver 18. Amari Cooper, wide receiver 15 to 27. Gallup, 55 to 78. Blake Jarwin, 24 to 60. The only two guys that did well were guys that weren't really drafted. Pollard and Dr. Schultz. Um, Dr. Schultz <laughs> was really good on this season. You're but, really committed to that. I mean, it's just when it's great, it's great. Um, <laughs> this is but, a this is but a. I still don't get it. What he's gelling. What do you mean you don't get it? He can't. How is he gelling? It's it's Dr. Schultz. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is. There's That's two so doctors. Cool. What do you? Oh, you, come on. How, you can't see the leap from <laughs> Dr. Schultz to Dr. Schultz? For all the things that we have done on this show, that's about as a close of I a correlation see as you get. I hands back there who's in support of Dr. Schultz. Yeah. Do we have three? We got two? We got three oh, hands. Yeah, the third that was a very three. slow hand, Brooks, and that was peer pressure. And everyone at home is raising their hand. No, I, mean, I know. I know. Um, but th this is, um, I, I think the uh, takeaway here. And something we need to factor in going forward is like the consolidation the consolidation of assets is so important. You know, last year when the Chiefs were just crushing it for people, it was Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. It's like you know where they're going. All the fantasy points go to a few options. Um that's what's been so great about the Vikings, right? It's like you've got Dalvin Cook and you got Justin Jefferson. And here it was just there's it was almost like there were too many too many assets. The offense was great. And and really, uh, part of this stat that's misleading is they led the NFL in total points scored 30.4, but they had a lot of defensive scores. I was going to say, the defense changing this year, which, you know. Yeah, Parsons, settle down over there. We need some offensive <laughs> points, man. Yeah, we've seen this before. I mean, it really, across the board, affects everybody. So... Yeah, you're right. Consolidation of assets, defensive performance makes a big difference. Will be interesting with we have Gallup, Cedric Wilson, and the doctor are currently free agents. So I maybe he leaves to study more medicine. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I mean, shoot. Uh Grandpa's last hurrah. Bears <laughs> second year tight end Cole Komet is the first tight end in NFL history to see ninety plus targets. And not score a single receiving touchdown. Man. Jimmy Grandpa, three receiving touchdowns. I made $300 off of Jason. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, major increase in usage for Cole Komet. So we're, yes. we're flagging this because we're Arrow looking to up. 2022. The volume was there, but the touchdowns just weren't. You have a new head coach. You got a, a quarterback that's going to be – uh, he seems to like targeting Cole Komet. It's just yep. not in the paint. Well, because that was it, Jimmy Graham's zone. Yeah, but what does that say that they thought Jimmy – was it was it simply Jimmy Graham's on the roster and so this is the only place we can use him, let's get him in, that'd be great. Or is it possible that they thought Jimmy Graham, Pa, this version of Jimmy Graham, is just actually better than Cole Komet inside the red Which zone? Which he is. Yeah, I mean that's I mean Jimmy Graham is bad. Jimmy Graham is no, he's he's elite. Jimmy Graham is an elite red zone target. 
He's very large. I mean, he was elite, elite. at one time, but was he was... He? Yes, he used to be an athletic middle of the field, him and the seam, let him run. Now he is an elite end zone target. He really is. Oh, man. I don't he know. He wins. I... He wins. Cole Komet. He had three touchdowns on the season. Let's not get yeah. carried away. Uh, you know, it's. I know you fell all of them with the hundred dollar bills, <laughs> uh, but I yeah, don't did know. Did you watch their he's offense? Huge. They might have had three on the year. Yeah, I mean, he's he's big. Uh, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers could have him use more. I I, I, mean, I don't know that he what, Jimmy didn't Green? he have ten touchdowns last year or something? Eight. You mean two years ago? No. Last year he had eight touchdowns in the red zone. So uh, this is what he does. So I don't. I in other words, to answer your question, I don't indict Cole Komet at all. But Cole Komet is not going to go get jump balls in the corner of the end zone. That's just not what they've done. That's so. fine. I do, I do reject your verbiage, though. That is now two years ago. Last year is... Oh, you're making me move the... Yeah. So you, you want to be... Okay, well, well, no, because I'm right. Because uh, it was two years ago when he had eight touchdowns. He had three touchdowns this last year. They're like the same size. Six, but they're both 6'6". Six, six. They're within a couple pounds of each other. Just, I think that the arrow was way up on Cole Komet. Like, I, I think that the... How I feel about his future as a fantasy tight end does the, not match where the market is on him right I, now. I, I, we can agree on that. And I, look, every tight end is that size. Not every tight end goes up and has ball skills and has jumping ability and all of that. Well, Evan Ingram wishes he was six six. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, so Cole Komet, arrow pointing up. We all agree on that. Could be a buy low in dynasty leagues. Could be mm -hmm. a late round tight end next year that you that you look at. I'm sure yeah. there will be some off season hype about Cole Komet. If Jimmy Grandpa has indeed had his last ride into the sunset, uh, all right. On a, on a rascal, going five <laughs> miles an hour. So but then he gets up. Yeah. He, he, ride, he takes the rascal to the goal line. Yeah. He gets he does, out, yeah. and, and then, then he, he leaps straight up. I have to believe Cole Komet can outleap Jimmy Graham at this point in time. You would think uh, no. so. I would think so. I want to see it. I Jimmy see Graham, some, some box perfected jumps. getting fined for the uh, yes, the, the, the slamming over it the, over the yeah. goalpost. I think we just like making fun of Jimmy a man Grandpa. much younger than you. Uh, <laughs> throw if the Raven more. <laughs> the Ravens offense transformed from being dead last in total pass attempts to ninth with 610 attempts this year. It's the biggest year to year pass jump over the last 20 years. Lamar had nine games of 30-plus passing attempts. How do we project all of this going forward? We did discuss this a little bit on the a show bit, recently. Yeah. This is um, this is a math equation. You, you remove a, a, a great defense. You remove great running backs. And then at times you remove Lamar Jackson, So um, which is going to lead to less rushing attempts with the backup running backs too, or quarterbacks as well. Uh, I think we find improvements on the defense and the running game next year. And but I don't think we revert to being dead last. So I would put them as a middle of the pack passing offense in terms of volume next year. What yep. do you guys think? I, I tend to agree with that. Like can can the defense return? Like is is everything just blamed on injuries and then next year it's the, the Ravens are back to being that very scary defense that you don't want your players matched up against? I don't know if I don't know if that's the case. So I would just I would try and be measured and say that they have definitely said with their actions of the front office they want to have a, uh, uh, an increase of pass attempts but I think that the the pendulum went too far for what they want this year yeah I I, I mean if you look we, we talked about their actions you know drafting the first round rookie all of that this is part of why I think Mark Andrews is he has leveled up to the elite status from great to elite is because of the passing attempt the issue we always had with you know, uh, Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews is just the passing pie was too small. Now, the 610, a lot of that was when the backup came in. Uh, he, he threw for a ton. But if you just look at the games where Lamar Jackson played, you know, the majority of the snaps wasn't injured with 14% of snaps. He would have been on pace this year. The way that they played with him was on pace for 584 passing attempts. If you compare that to his pace, uh, his 17 game pace from the year prior, he was on pace for 426. So when we talked right. two years ago about the small passing pie, that was 426 passing attempts. That's itty-bitty. 584 passing attempts means Mark Andrews can be a fantasy stud. It means Hollywood or depending on you know whatever you believe, Bateman, they can, they can have more fantasy relevance because I do think they're going to continue passing the ball. at, at Again, this wasn't like they 
you know, they were ninth. Uh, you know, they're a middle of the pack team, and I will take a middle of the pack pie versus bottom of the league. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be philosophical for this offense. He he was on eighteen, nineteen interception pace. Uh, Lamar Jackson was as well. So, um, I think we're I think we're in agreement of where the offense is heading. They don't have a a guaranteed contract for Lamar yet, right? Correct. So that that be interesting. Extension. Breaking news. All right, you might have uh, known this even when we talked about it earlier in the show, but it does look like a torn ACL. Yeah, for Odell. For Odell Beckham Jr., the second torn ACL against the Bengals in two years. Oh, seriously? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes, two catches for 52 yards, one touchdown, one moonwalk before the injury. Ian Rappaport reporting. That moonwalk was – that was a good one. I missed the moonwalk. You yeah. did, oh, well, after, he, after he, knocked the, he knocked the hat up. You I'm just that? saying, like, for – The moonwalk was good, but the hat – I love the hat. But, I mean, you're in cleats. Like, that's just – that's well, impressive he stuff. he moonwalked in cleats? Yes. Jess, I got to watch this. Now, that is not where he tore the ACL. No. Hmm. Couldn't have been healthy for those knees. That is uh, – I mean, but that's that's a lot to come back from in two yes, consecutive it's, years and it's going to throw some shade on dynasty value. There's some, there was finally yeah. some optimism around Beckham. Yeah, if Beckham had left the season healthy, re-signs with the Rams, you'd be pretty excited for him moving next year and into next year. Now, an ACL recovery, you're talking probably on the pup to start at the beginning of the year, miss at least six weeks. Can't have the injury any later in the season. It's a bummer. Well, it could have been in the fourth quarter. Okay, you can have it a few minutes later in the season. Yeah, you're talking about last season, right? Correct. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> trying you. to make sure I understand. Thank you. That is correct. What's going on around here? Good job. Now we understand the uh -huh. vernacular. That's good. That's good. All right. Um, that is going to do it for today's show. One more reminder for you, ultimatedraftkit.com. The pre-order is up. It's available. The Dynasty Pass is awesome. My favorite part is the team opportunity sheets. They've been uh, upgraded this year. You can filter by best opportunity per position. It is amazing to research uh, for your upcoming dynasty startup drafts, for, for rookie drafts. All of that is available in the UDK+. Plus. You can get that at ultimatedraftkit.com. That is going to do it. That is it. Last season in the books. We We're did on it, to 2022. Everybody. Thank we you did. for listening, everybody. Make sure you go to ultimatedraftkit.com, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.